welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. Happy St. Barnabas Day. Yes, the 11th of June is the feast day of St. Barnabas, an early Christian who was born Joseph in Cyprus. He was renamed Barnabas when he joined the apostles in Jerusalem. He carried out several missionary journeys with Paul the Apostle and is mentioned in the book of Acts. According to Christian tradition, Barnabas was martyred in Cyprus in 61 AD. Being stoned to death. He is seen as the founder of the Cypriot Orthodox Church. Interestingly, as well as being the patron saint of Cyprus and Antioch, St. Barnabas is also the patron saint of peacemakers and also can be invoked against hailstorms. That's quite a strange one, isn't it? Remember that one. According to Steve Roud in the English year, St. Barnabas Day was celebrated in the 15th and 16th centuries by decorating churches with garlands of flowers such as roses, woodruff and lavender. He also writes of how maidens went gathering for church funds and money was paid out for bread, wine and ale for the singers of the King's Chapel and for the clerks of the town. Theresa Maclean in Medieval English Gardens writes of how sweet woodruff, which was at its best by the 11th of June, was garlanded with roses to make red and white wreaths of fragrance for the statues and candles that filled medieval churches. She gives the example of St Barnabas Day 1479, when St Mary at Hill Church on Tower Hill paid four shillings sevenpence for flags, garlands and torches for Corpus Christi, St Barnabas and other days. And then in 1487, the same church bought two and a half dozen rose garlands at a cost of eight and a half pence for St Barnabas Day. Maclean explains that the garlands were hung on processional crosses and worn by the clergy as crowns and then hung on the rood screen and the choir after the procession. Roses have a lovely fragrance and woodruff was used as a strewing herb on floors so it must have had a wonderful scent too. The churches must have smelt so sweet. In the 16th century, poet Edmund Spencer wrote of St Barnabas Day in his Epithalamion, an ode to his bride Elizabeth on their wedding day in 1594. Here's an extract. Ring ye the bells, ye young men of the town, and leave your wanted labours for this day. This day is holy, do ye write it down, that ye forever it remember may. This day the sun is in his chiefest height, with Barnaby the bright, from whence declining daily by degrees, he somewhat loseth of his heat and light, when once the crab behind his back he sees. Now the crab, of course, is referring to cancer, the star sign cancer, which was left behind as the sun progressed to Leo. Now you might wonder why Spencer writes of the sun being at its highest on St Barnabas Day the 11th of June. Well this is because of old and new style dating. The Tudors used the Julian calendar but we today use the Gregorian calendar. So their 11th of June is our 21st of June, the summer solstice. Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon chose St Barnabas Day for their wedding day in 1509 and you can find out more about their wedding in last year's video which I'll give you a link to and when I say I will give you a link to last year's videos or to further reading or anything like that you will find them in the description in the text which describes this video. Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. Oh, and by the way, you often ask me where Teasel is when I'm recording. So Tim's just going to pan down and show you where Teasel is when I'm recording. There she is. Or if I'm recording in the other room, She's quite often on the sofa watching me. She just likes to supervise and make sure I get things right. Take care. Bye-bye.